Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to today's session. Uh, today I'm going to, to give you a deep dive on the six scheduling. Uh, my name is Wei Huang. I work for IBM, and I'm also the current co-chair of the six scheduling. So today's agenda contains three parts. First, I will give you a very brief introduction on scheduler, and then we'll share with you some best practice tips, and uh, so that you can make the most of your scheduler. And the third part is I will give you some update on the latest development progress. So first of all, what does scheduler exactly do? So in short and lemon terms, scheduler just does one thing, which is to put the path to the nodes. So that means it doesn't involve into the path creation. It also doesn't involve into the uh, spin up the underlying containers. It just find the, the node for the penny path. And in technical terms, so basically, scheduler will watch the pending path, which in, which means the path doesn't have the spec done on name set, and then it will look into the path explicit scheduling constraint like CPU memory request and notability, etc., and also taking some predefined uh, implicit scheduling preference into consideration and look at the cluster resource usage and make the decision to place the path to the optimal node. So that is what scheduler does. And inside scheduler, there are basically several components. The first one, we call it the caching. So to make the most optimal decision, scheduler has to maintain a cache to have a sort of choose view of the whole cluster, like how many nodes are there, how many paths are there, and how many PV, PVCs, et cetera, et cetera. So scheduler, we run internally a few scheduling formers to watch for the API objects so that we can maintain the internal cache properly. And the second part is called queuing. So if a path is coming into the queue, we schedule it with a reasonable order. So internally, we have a priority queue. And if there's no node fit for the path, we also have some back off mechanism to ensure the lower priority path has a chance to be scheduled and also the path can have a fair chance to be re-popped up and be retried. And also next, uh, our main scheduling goal routine and binding goal routine, which is goes the serious processes to, to the core scheduling flow. So the core scheduling flow looks like this. So first of all, we will pick a path from the scheduling queue, and we will go through a series, what we call the extension point here. So for each extension point, we have a series of plugins, and we will go through those plugins either uh, sequentially or in parallel, depends on what phase it is. It will first go through the pre-filter and filter to check the hard requirements for the part, like how many CPU it requires, the tens, the toleration, the affinity, et cetera. So if there are some nodes fit for the part, we will do a prioritization on the nodes, which is to give the nodes candidate score for each, according to predefined the score plugins. And then finally, the node has the highest score will be chosen as the final node. And then we go to the next cycle, binding cycle, to assign the node to the path. So this is the happy path. So what about the uh, negative path? What if in the filter, there's no single node can fit for the path? We will go to the post filter phase. Uh, right now, by default, we have a preemption plugin, which semantically tries to preempt lower priority paths so that to make room for the incoming part. So, and if it succeeds, means we can find a node to serve the part with the cost of preempting some victims. Then we will also set the part status that nominated no name to the part and then put it back to the queue because we cannot immediately uh, assign the no name to it because the victim are still being de deleted, so we should have a grace period for those parts to be deleted. So 
this is basic the core scheduling flow. And this is the basic introduction of the how scheduler does. So next, I call it make the most of your scheduler. So first part, I call it policy customization. So scheduler is a box. It has a lot of knobs, not of lot of options. So if the by this default option doesn't work for you, you can adjust them. But uh, one thing to keep in mind is that if you want to use some latest feature, latest options, you have to use the dash dash config and the following with the schedule config YAML. And this YAML is the most standardized and the most organized way to use this kind of option. The latest uh, version of the schedule config is v1 bit up to this is the example so you usually have to pass it to the cube scheduler binary and second thing to keep in mind is that uh, by default there's a lot of scoring plugins to like to favor each kind of preference and apply that uh, impact on your final decision and by default the weight is usually one. So if you prefer one scoring policy over the other, for example, uh, in this case, I put image locality, for example, image locality means you prefer to schedule the path to the nodes that already has an image downloaded. So in this case, I uh, gave a very large weight, which is 50,000 for this kind of Plugin so that I can impact the final decision for the part so that it will be preferred to be land on the node which has the image already downloaded. So this is, I call it uh, plugin specific weight because this weight is a uh, plugin in the plugins configuration context. And there's another way to configure the weight is in the work, workload itself, like in node affinity part affinity apart anti-affinity, there is a field called prefer during scheduling, ignore during execution. There's also a weight for your part to show your uh, favor to the existing part, either you want to coexist or not coexist with those kind of parts. So this is also a preference, preference and has a weight associated to it. So basically two types, plugin specific and the cloud specific. And next thing is that we have a default set of the plugins, but that doesn't prevent you to use another plugin to replace the default plugins, or you just want to make additional plugins. So for example, by default, we enable the list allocated plugin, which means we prefer to schedule the paths evenly across the cluster. But in some use cases, like cluster autoscaler is not the case. It's totally the opposite. It prefers to make the use of existing nodes as much as possible instead of, like in CA's case, we will spin up a new machine, which we will uh, waste. The, the money. So in case of CA, you maybe want to use the most allocated plugin and disable the least allocated plugin. But wait, you may be wondering, I may don't have the full knowledge on what kind of plugins are there and what kind of plugins should be enabled. So what if the, I enable the most allocated plugin but forgot to, or I don't know to disable the list allocated, what should I do? So in this case, these two plugins will work in the opposite way. So this is not the, the, the expected behavior. So that is one thing we are considering all the time. And for this kind of conflict plugins, we try to refactor them and uh, come for example, in this case, we come up with a new score plugin called Node Resource Fit. 
And uh, in any time, we enforce there's only one type of behavior is enabled. So in this case, you you can specify the plugin arguments, which in this case is called scoring strategy dot type with most allocated. So in any time, there's only one type can be specified. So you don't need to worry about the mistake of enable two conflicting plugin at the same time. So this is the example to adjust your scheduling behavior by modifying the default or modifying the plugin arguments. So here I, I put a link for you to get familiar with all the plugin and their arguments and what their semantics. So basically that's the first recipe I want to share with you to customize your scheduling behavior by modifying the default schedule config, like changing the plugin weight and changing the plugin arguments, et cetera. The second part I want to talk about multi-profile versus multi-scheduler. So multi-scheduler, you may have know that is that in addition to the default scheduler, you can run your own scheduler to cover some scheduling tasks of the particular path. So what's the problem of running multiple scheduler? The biggest problem is resource confliction because these two scheduler binaries doesn't communicate with each other. So they may compete for the limited resources. Suppose a node has only one CPU left and default scheduler and your, for example, full scheduler simultaneously assign their path X and Y to the node. I suppose both paths request one CPU. And in this case, Kubelet will be the eventual arbitrator. It will reject the latter arriving path. Suppose in this case it's part Y. So there will be a very severe and weird symptom, which is the latter arrived path will be show up in this case with out of CPU and the in API's perspective, this part are already finished the scheduling phase. It has already has the no name set. That implies this part will be behind there forever until the resources in this node get released. And that's a very unexpected behavior will sometimes even involve operation to manual resolve this. So this is the biggest problem of man multi-schedulers. So do you have solutions? Yeah, we do have some solutions to mitigate this, but not perfect. For example, some users are trying to divide the cluster into several pieces and delegate the some piece to one scheduler and the others to another. So this can work, but will cause fragmentation and hope can cause the low cluster utilization. Another solution is on top of this multiple scheduler, they set up an extra arbitrator so that each scheduled decision was reported to the arbitrator and then arbitrator works as the central place to do a decision, reject or accept. So this works, but as you see, will definitely cause extra workload and also because you in, introduce another component, you have to uh, manage the extra efforts, man, better manage these kind of extras. So what's the community direction on this? So the community direction is, is to use multi-profile scheduler. Multi-profile scheduler is on still one scheduler, but inside the scheduler, it can define different profiles and each profile you can think of is as sub scheduler. So because it has its own set of scheduling policies to including which kind of weights, which kind of plugins, and which kind of uh, plugin arguments, etc. So in this case, I provided a schedule config multi-profile YAML. And here you can see that we have four kinds of schedule profiles. One is default scheduler to uh, keep it as is for the regular workloads. And the second is image first. 
to favor the image locality so that maybe some service workers care about the code start time so they want to schedule a path to the nodes with the image already downloaded. And third is called the pack. So cluster auto scaler may be beneficial from this because you want to save the cost of, of running machines. The last is called skip score. Because score phase is the doing the ranking is to uh, to do the preference for the path. So in some cases, like the cluster is in very uh, schedule is in highly used, and there's a lot of paths queuing there. You maybe want to schedule the path. In in most cases, a low priority or offline workers as quick as possible. So I don't care about finding the best node. There is the node satisfying the hot requirements that works for me. So in this case, you have four kind of profiles and your workloads can specify the spec the schedule name to map to the profile name. So there's two ways to specify the schedule name. Once you specify them uh, manually. The second way is to do that dynamically. So you can set up a, a admission controller and so that it can intercept the creation of the path, right? So you can programmatically uh, like uh, assign the path to the, the, the schedule profile by, for example, the path labels or by even by some external metric like how busy is the current schedule is behaving, right? Like the, how many paths are there are being queued up in the schedule. So it's very dynamic. You can work on a lot of innovative idea to do this. And uh, in terms of the schedule config, uh, we are also raising up a cap to simplify the schedule config. We, in the, we, we, we will introduce a multi-point plugin so that uh, for a user, you don't need to know whether the plugin implements score or filter or post filter. You just define the name and provide that as a plugin. So internally, you will eat well. Uh, smartly detect whether which extension points it it implements and then loaded them properly. So this cab is still being developed, so it will be available in one twenty three. So this is the second part: multi profile versus the multi schedule. M running multi schedule is fine, but you should be knowing the limitation and uh, upon the resource confliction, maybe some manual operation work will be involved. And the third recipe is um, improve your throughput. So scheduler, especially on a large cluster, you sometimes don't need to iterate all the cluster to find a node to fit the, the, the path. So there's one option called percentage of nodes to score. And uh, by default is set to 50, but not exact 50 is the adaptive algorithm to calculate the percentage by default. So, for example, suppose you have a 500 nails, it will the adaptive percentage default percentage will be 46. That means it will in the filter phase it will check the nails, and if the number reach to in this case 230 in the filter. If two, two, 230 nodes has been available to be a candidate for the, for the path, the filter phase will stop instead of going through all 500 nodes. So, and then this 230 nodes will be passed down to the scoring phase and give the score to each node. So in this case, you can see that in a 200 nodes in the most Desired case, you only, only need to filter 680 nails and uh, hence only, only score those kind of nails. So this is the default percentage. So in your case, you maybe want to tune this percentage 
value according to a cluster size. For example, if you have 2,000 nails and specify the, the percentage as 10%, you only will score and filter 200 nails. Yeah. This is the first uh, parameter I want to highlight. Uh, second one is also follow the same idea to iterate fewer nails instead of going through all of them. In the default preemption plugin, there is some parameters like minimum candidate nails percentage or minimum candidate nails absolute. So by defining these two parameters, you can define how many nails you want to go through the preemption phase instead of go through all the nails. Uh, another option is called prefer nominate node. It's a feature, it's not an option, it's just a feature gate introduced in 1.10.1 and already enabled by default in 22. So it's just a, a yes or no option you want to use. And we believe it's a very useful feature, so we don't want to provide it as an option. It's a shortcut to leverage the status nominating no name so that when the path has been already carried with that field, we won't go through all the nodes. Instead, we will just do once to check whether the previous nominating node still fits. If it fits, I will just assign the node to it rather than going through the regular screening flow. If not, don't worry, we will fall back to the regular screening flow. So that is why I say this is a feature I think is mostly will increase the scheduling, especially the preemption uh, throughput. Another uh, parameter is called parallelism. So across the scheduling flow, there are two phases we run the plugins in parallel. And by default, we run the nodes in batch, so we default to 16. Uh, so the 16 sounds like to corresponding to the CPU cores, but underlying it will involve the operation system as well as go through the go long uh, scheduler. So sometimes it cannot be hard coded to the CPU cores, so it needs some tuning to get the best of performance. We used to have the PR to want to set this to the uh, CPU cost number, but it seems doesn't work properly, so we revert that PR. So if you want to uh, customize this and want to, for example, if you have a lot of CPU cores, maybe defaults to 16 cannot make full of the CPU usage, so maybe you want to. Uh, tune it and uh, so that adjusted. So that's the third recipe I want I wanted to share to improve your throughput optimization. And the final one is uh, I think it's a uh, it's a knowledge that I just want to highlight is that in addition to some regular resource core resource like CPU memory, we can model your customer resource in the format of extended resource. I give a very uh, easy examples. So as a user, you can model your resource. Then you can give a key value pair and patch that to the node capacity. So because we manage this kind of node capacity in a very generalized way, so in this case, if you patch that to the node spec, uh, its status will have the capacity automatically populated. So that also the scheduler knows that you have this kind of, well, it's fake GP information. So that you can submit a pod request with this kind of GPU with file. And the scheduler will use the default plugin, node resource fit plugin to to, to schedule your part. So in this case, a lot, I see a lot of users implement their own scheduling plugin, but it's not necessary. Uh, a lot of plugins already taking the extended resource as first the citizen and the supporting them well. All right, that's the four 
recipes I want to share with you. So that I hope those recipes help so you can make the most of your schedule, do more customized options and without any further coding. Well, maybe you, you may say that it still doesn't fit my need. What should I do? And if, are there any viable options to feel, fulfill like advanced scheduling requirements like batch workflows? The answer is yes, we do. We have been thinking about to supporting more diverse workflows two years ago or three years ago. So we initialized the schedule framework design to focus more on expose the internal mechanics to the external developers so that you can use the core scheduling capabilities easily and then easily build your own schedule plugins. And uh, so that with your customized out of tree plugins and plugged into the default scheduler, you will make it a scheduler plus plus. So it's still one scheduling binary with extra functionalities your developers. The other thing we were thinking about is that in some cases you have to involve other components to facilitate the scheduling. For example, in terms of batch workloads, sometimes you know exactly when and how to control the creation of the path. And if you can control the pod creation more smartly, instead of just dumping the path immediately when a, when a workload is created, then maybe can save a lot of scheduling efforts to fulfill the the scheduling constraints of your uh, workload. So recently we were thinking about that. So either you can define some, your own CRDs so that with some extra controllers and admission webhooks to control the better creation time of the path. Also, there's, we have done some upstream work like suspended job, like in the next release we were doing some features like multiple scheduling directory for the suspended job. So this, in one way, we will perfect our internal scheduling mechanics. In another way, uh, other components can also help so that these two things combined together can make the scheduling experience more smooth to adapt to more diverse workloads. All right, uh, that's pretty much I want to share with you to make the most of your schedule. So the last part is the update on the development progress. The first thing is the schedule component config. In 122, we upgraded the version to v1 beta 2. We removed some options that are either uh, not used quite often or doesn't quite make sense. And uh, we will also, in the next release, we'll come up with a simplified scheduling config so that you can have a more easy to config uh, way to configure this kind of plugins. And also we will try to make that totally backwards compatible. And uh, there are some features I've already mentioned, like prefer normally no, like multiple scheduling directives. And uh, also in 122, we add a namespace selector for pod affinity. In the before, in the pod affinity, we only provide the option for you to specify a slice of the namespaces, but now we support the namespace selector. Uh, the last thing we did is the, a series of scheduling queuing uh, enhancement to improve the efficiency, like we, in the before, we re queue the path in a very brute force way. Like any any events comes in, we will move the path back to the back to the head of the schedule queue. But now we will uh, we define the series of rules for the path only to be uh, moved to the head only if mapped events comes in, like. If a pod failed with a PVC or PV uh, restriction, one, for example, uh, 
irrelevant events comes in, the part will not be moved to the head. So it can save a lot of uh, scheduling cycles and also uh, mitigate the sort of head of blocking problem in the scheduling queue. And also, as more and more users are using scheduling framework to do their customer plugin, so we also did some work to support some dynamic event handlers so that you can uh, define your CRDs so that the CRD can be also detected by the scheduling framework. We internally use some dynamic uh, client goal mechanics to do this. And also we provide the option for the plugin developers to proactively move pause to active queue. It can be sometimes useful for like the co-scheduling plugin uh, to, for example, if you have Spark uh, job, when the driver uh, part comes in, you may want at that time to move its associated executor path back to the active queue. So the executor path can be scheduled afterwards immediately. Okay, so next is about some sub projects. The first one is scheduled plugin. So scheduled plugin is uh, a repo which we initiated for we want to engage the different vendors to contribute their design implementations. So here are two KubeCon talks uh, you can check out. And both are using the scheduling framework to build some customer uh, schedule plugin to fulfill the business need. Uh, second sub project is this scheduler. So this scheduler provides some rebalancing policy to redistribute the path according to some defined rules. Because scheduling decision is the, it happens on the scheduling time. But along with the cluster, uh, as time goes, some some constraint may not satisfy anymore. So this scheduler can instantly regularly check this kind of uh, policies so that if the policy violates, it will practically uh, delete them so that they got uh, another chance to be rescheduled. And third one is uh, called Cube Scheduler Simulator. It's a new GSOC uh, project which provides some web UI as well as some simulating SDKs for you to easily build your uh, your your toolkit to like set up a uh, a cluster uh, programmatically and see whether uh, you can replace a series of requests and see how the scheduling result is. So right now it's still in the very early phase, but yeah, we maybe want to to spend more efforts on it to make it very have a very solid SDK so that the integrators can benefit from that. All right, and uh, you can contact us in the China, in the mailing list, and also welcome to join our weekly meeting. You can raise your uh, agenda item there. We will uh, go over your proposal, et cetera, et cetera. All right, uh, thank you for joining today's session. Uh,